We're humans and we like to classify things, and therefore we classify matter. All matter is classified into two major groups, our pure substances and our impure substances or our mixtures. Let's focus on pure first. In pure substances, we've got two basic kinds. We've got our pure substances made of one type of atom, and then we've got our substances made of two or more different atoms chemically combined. Let's take a look at the one type of atom first. Here's our one atom, and here's a whole bunch of identical atoms. We call these things elements. All 118 elements can be found on the periodic table of elements, and each one of these is made of just one type of atom. For example, all magnesium is made of magnesium atoms, all iron is made of iron atoms, all nitrogen is made of nitrogen atoms, and so on and so forth. Now, the question is, do we actually encounter these? Yes, we do. So, in our culture, we like to give engagement rings when we ask somebody to marry us. And these represent our pure love. The reason we use pure elements for this is because of that. So, let's take the diamond, for example. Diamond is made entirely out of carbon atoms. Therefore, diamonds are elemental carbon. Gold bands are made of just gold atoms, and therefore, we would call the gold band elemental gold. All right, so pure substances are great, but they don't get us very far because there's only 118 different kinds. So if we take two or more different kinds of atoms or elements and combine them, we get a whole bunch of compounds instead. And compounds are much more complex, and there's a whole greater diversity of them out there. All right, let's take water, for example. Here is a compound water. It's made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. The reason we call this pure is because those hydrogen are always chemically bound to oxygen in the same way. Two hydrogen for every one oxygen. If we have a whole bunch of water, we find that every molecule in there is identical to the others. Therefore, we have pure water or a pure compound. So if we take sugar, for example, in our ice cream cone, sugar is always 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens just like our water was always two hydrogens to one oxygen. So we can have pure sugar and we can have pure water. And then we can mix those together and get something that is impure. The other cool thing about these pure substances is we can go from one to the other. For example, we can take compounds, break them down into elements, and we can take elements and build them into compounds. Here's an example of that using the compound of water. We can go from water to oxygen, hydrogen, and back. Elements, compounds, elements, compounds, so on and so forth. Okay, now let's take a look at our mixtures or impure substances. We've got two basic types of mixtures, those that are uniform or kind of evenly distributed, and those that are not uniform. Let's focus on the uniform first. We call those solutions. In a solution, we've got two or more substances. doesn't matter what the substances are. Each of those substances is actually pure. But when we mix them together, and they are evenly spaced, we get ourselves a solution. A and B in this case, or green and blue, are not actually chemically combined. They're just kind of mixed together evenly. We could easily kind of pick them apart if they were big enough. Some examples of solutions would be our sweat. Our sweat is a solution of water with some salt and other electrolytes in it. And the Gatorade we would drink to replenish the stuff lost from our sweat is also a solution. It's water and sugar and salt and potassium and some other electrolytes needed by the body. Okay, now we also have non-uniform or, Im or impure mixtures, which we call suspensions. In a suspension, just like in a solution, we still have two or more things, substance A and substance B. They're both pure substances, but then we mix them together. Only in a suspension, they don't mix evenly. They kind of get clumpy. And typically, if we take a suspension and leave it be, they will totally separate and uh, settle out on their own. An example of a suspension would be our blood. Blood has 
red blood cells, white blood cells, and clotting factors like platelets suspended in it and not perfectly evenly. And they happen to be suspended in a solution of blood plasma, which is made up of water and sugar and salts. Okay, so to recap, we've got our pure substances like elements and compounds. And then we have our impure mixtures like solutions, which are evenly mixed, and suspensions, which are not. Join us next time as we examine how to build atoms using the periodic table of elements.